Welcome back. Uh, since usually the last session before lunch, you say this is the last session before lunch, so I will say it now and not later, so you will forget it. Uh, my name is Aaron Mankowski. I'm a managing general partner of Pitango, as you see there. Uh, and uh, I will lead the session for investing in disruptive technologies. A few words about Pitango, which I think it's important because it will connect to what I'm going to say. We've been in the business for 26 years now. So eventually in venture, if you've been in the business for 26 years, probably we've done something good. But we've seen a lot of ups and downs. And I was debating what I'm going to talk about when you talk about investment in disruptive technologies. You know, we are in the Silicon Valley. It's all about innovation, on disruptions, on hype, on romance of venturing, uh, and about the big money. However, these are issues that everybody is talking every day from different angles, so I decided not to talk about this. What I want to talk about is the hype, the timeline, and facing reality, which I think when you're talking about investing in disruptive technology, it's a very important aspect of our investment. We all know, you probably have heard the sentence, that pioneers are dying with the arrows in the back. And when you're making investments in disruptive technologies, the key aspect is how you avoid that to happening to the company that you are investing in. I think the key aspect of why it's happening, a lot of people are not debriefing about history, about what happened in the past, because you will be amazed how many times the, the events and the patterns that are investing in technology are repeating themselves. Even though we have AI today to do for us kind of uh, uh, debriefing on, on history and try to do predictive analytics in the future. And you know, I'm, I'm using a sentence. Uh, my partner, Jaime Perez, is the son of the late Shimon Perez, uh, the, the president, the legendary president of Israel. He used to say, the future is unknown. The present is something that we are creating as we speak, but the past is always changing. And I think when we're looking at this, when we are looking at the past, we can do a lot, we can get a lot of insight. And I, I want to give you an example. You know, way back, a company like IBM used initially to have a service bureau. Then they had a terminal that you can use their computers. Then they were renting their computers. And then they start selling it. And then they were renting again. And now what is it, this service bureau of IBM? It's AWS of today. And I think we are having a lot of this kind of examples that if we understand them, we get a lot of the fundamentals of the decisions that we are making where to, uh, uh, where to invest. You know, obviously, you all know the hype. There is kind of many times you will see new names for old tricks. We used to have 20 years ago data security. We call it cybersecurity today. It's much more sexy, but a lot of the parameters are the same. The fundamentals have changed. The tools have changed. The basics have changed. Uh, but still, we are seeing hypes that are getting a lot of money and a lot of attention. The other key issue is the timeline, and I will give you some examples. I think most likely it takes much longer to get to mainstream than we envision when we are investing. It takes much more time to customers to adopt. You know, the cellular phone that we think today, it's a 10-year stuff. Cellular phone started 20 years ago with those bulky boxes of Motorola. But it took about 15 years until it became mainstream. And investment in that space have gone, a lot of them gone down the tubes because the companies did not have enough runway. Reality, you know, unforeseen challenges, regulation, supply chain problems, existing technologies that are maturing, all of them are creating major effects on the timeline. And now I want to include several examples that I think illustrate the issue of timeline. Let's take communication and infrastructure. You know, 20 years ago, for those of you who have been in the industry, everybody was started to talk about fiber to the home. And people say five years, every home in the US will have fiber. 
You know, what is the penetration rate of fiber to the home in the US today? Barely 15%, 20 years after, barely 15, 1.5%. We talked about autonomous driving and automotion, uh, automotive. The timeline over there is critical. I just want to give you one example how difficult it will be, and, and I'm happy that the guy from BMW here actually supported that without knowing what I'm going to say. But there is a known story about a guy that was driving in the US in a narrow street, and a, a kid kind of jumped in front of the car, and he kind of took the car to the side and hit about 10 cars. And he was suing the mother for negligence, and he won. Now, let's take what happened if the car was autonomous. What kind of decision the car would have made? Who is responsible? The engineer that wrote the code? The company that actually designed the car? The owner of the car? These are major problems that have nothing to do with technology. Autonomous driving exists today. But it will take time. And we are seeing tons of money goes into this business today. You know, we are talking about SaaS. SaaS was not invented this decade. It was invented 20 years ago. We invested at a time at SaaS, people used to say 770, seven years and $70 million. But it really took AWS and the like and Azure to really embrace us and make it mainstream as it is today. But it took almost 20 years. And you know, uh, uh, the last one that I will mention, I have many other examples, but the timeline here is kind of uh, gonna hit me soon, uh, is AR, VR. We, we have one presentation here later on. Uh, uh, I was a pilot in the Israeli Air Force, and the key issue when you are looking into how many events someone can see? Why the AR, VR, or the Google Glass did not go so fast? Or it did not go into an augmented reality, into a hybrid environment? Lockheed Martin at the time, uh, McDonnell Douglas, sorry, did a survey. How many events a human being can see at one time, and to how many of them you can react? So at, at T time. So the events number is 15, that's it. You can see that there exist. You can react only to one at time t and maybe time plus epsilon to another one. And that's the reason that most people cannot look at an augmented reality in a hybrid environment and still function. It will have a lot of other stuff that it will be very good at, but not at this one. So anyhow, I hope that I made my point, and, and the key aspect that I believe that based on this conversation, I hope that uh, the, the, the panel that is going to see, that we get, the panels that we're going to see here with a kind of, I would like to welcome on stage a group of corporate leaders that has deep focus on technology uh, for enterprise. Obviously, enterprise software had ups and downs, but I think the last decade is no less than a revolution in enterprise software. And by the way, talking about hypes about 10 years ago, a lot of Silicon Valley guys didn't want to touch it. So uh, I would like to introduce the, the moderator of the next panel discussion, which is uh, security and privacy, ensuring trust with the global uh, customer. So please welcome on stage Anthony Giuliano. Uh, the general partner and chief technology officer at Landmark uh, that will lead the panel. 